I'm Dr. Molly Gebrian, and I'm going to be talking to you today about playing faster, so music that has to go really fast. Thank you so much to all of you that have watched my other videos about the neuroscience of practicing and uh, memorization as well. If you missed those videos, I've linked to the playlist in the, in the comments below. I've gotten a lot of emails in the last few months from people all over the world wanting to talk about practicing, so keep them coming. I love questions about practicing in brains. One question I keep getting repeatedly is how do you practice to play stuff faster? Um, and lots of you have been giving me comments that, well, my teacher says I have to practice it really, really slow. Is that right? Or I've been told that if I have to play it fast, I should practice it fast, that there's no point in practicing it slow. What should I do? So I decided to make this video um, with some ideas for you, again, always grounded in neuroscience. So um, let's get started with this research. So the first thing to know about playing stuff that has to be fast is that yes, you first have to practice it slowly. If you can't play it cleanly, slowly, you're never gonna be able to play it when it's fast. And so you have to practice slowly to make sure it's in tune, it's clean, the rhythm is right. Um, because if you can't do those things when it's slow, it's only gonna get sloppier when it's fast. The reason you have to slow it down is because you need to give your brain a chance to process all that information. There's a lot of information that we have to deal with when we play music. And if you're going too fast for your brain to process it, you won't be noticing things that are out of tune or um, things that aren't quite clean when you're playing. So first, you absolutely have to practice slow to make it clean. That being said, just because you can play it slow, and clean does not mean you can play it fast. Playing fast is a really different thing than playing slow. And I think that's where the advice comes in that you have to practice it fast. Yes, that's true, but you can't just practice it slow and think magically you'll be able to play it fast and it will be fine. You have to work it up to play it fast and that process is often time consuming um, because we are asking our brains to work faster and faster to coordinate things on much more precise timescales the faster we go. So today I wanna to talk to you about ideas for how you can make things faster and how you can make it comfortable and clean when you have to play it fast. So I'm gonna start with some really common advice just to make sure you have this advice. And then um, as we go through the video, we'll get into some more what I think of as like advanced ways of practicing to play fast. So the first thing that you wanna do when you're playing fast is to practice in different rhythms. This is really, really common advice for practicing playing fast. So the two most common rhythms that teachers suggest that students practice in are um, dotted rhythms. So you can see here, you can see the original, and then you can see these two dotted rhythms. So dotted eight sixteenth first, so da, 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 and then the opposite, sixteenth dotted eight, so da, 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 da. And when you practice in these rhythms, you want to make the fast notes as fast as you can. So the long notes are, are kind of lazy, the fast notes are super snappy. So think like triple dotting. So da, 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 instead of da, 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 da. Um, because the point of practicing in rhythms like this is that you do small amounts very fast. In this case, pairs of notes very fast with a rest um, in between. Okay, but it's not enough to just do these two rhythms. Often students are taught about practicing in rhythms, and these are the only two they're taught, but it's not enough, you need more. So the next group of rhythms I like to give my students is what I call the Beethoven seven rhythm. So this is the dun, 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 dun rhythm. Um, so this is really challenging when you have 16th notes, for instance. So you have a group of four and you're doing a three part rhythm, but that's why it works so well. Um, so first you do this rhythm starting on the first note of the passage, as is illustrated here. Then you want to move the rhythm over one note. So essentially the rhythm is going to start on the second note of your passage now. And then the third iteration is to have this Beethoven seven rhythm start on the third note of your passage. So you've moved it over one more note. The point of this is that every note gets to be the fast note. So that's the next thing that I have my students do and what I do myself. And then the third group of rhythms is to make each note in the grouping long. So to illustrate this, first you will have the first note in each group long. So da, 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 da. Then, so you'll play the passage like that. 
Then you'll do it with the second in each group long. So da 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 etc. Then the third in each group long. So da 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 and so on. And then finally the fourth in each group long. So da 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 da. Again, what this is doing is it's making you play small groups of notes fast um, with time to rest on the on the longer notes. When you have a passage that has different bowings or slurrings or whatever, you want to do these rhythms both with no slurrings or articulation, so everything separate, and then you also want to do it with the slurrings and articulations. Um, so I don't know for people other than string players, but for string players, when you have a fast passage that's all under a slur, often it's very difficult to play it fast and even because you don't have the bow reinforcing what the left hand is going to have to do. And so you do these rhythms separate bows so that the bow is helping reinforce the left hand. And then you do the same rhythms with the printed bowing so that your left hand has to practice being even on its own, essentially. Another great thing to do in addition to rhythms is to practice things in different slurring patterns. So for us as string players, this is different bowings. So first you want to start with two slurred. So again, here I've printed the original and then I've um, printed two slurred. Then I always move the slur over one note. So bum ba dum ba dum ba dum because that's more challenging to slur over the beat. And then I will do three slurred, four slurred, five slurred, six slurred, some seven slurred, eight slurred, you can see here. Um, you can do more than eight slurred, um, but I always go at least through eight. The slurring patterns that line up well with the beat, so in this case, four slurred and eight slurred, are not very difficult, but the ones that really contradict the beat, so five slurred, for instance, or seven slurred, those are really challenging and therefore the most important to do. So the purpose of practicing things in bowings and also rhythms, all of this stuff, is essentially to make it harder um, so that your brain has to concentrate more on it so that when you play it, as written, it feels much easier. Okay, so after I've done two through eight slurred, then I do different combinations of slurs and separates. Um, so again, here is, you can see the original, and then first I'll do two slur, two separate, then I'll move the slur over one, so the slur goes on the middle two notes, then move it over again, so that would be two separate, two slurred, then move it over again, so it's the last slurred, to the first slurred, and then three slurred, one separate, and then one separate, three slurred. So I always do these different slurring patterns. Now, obviously, if you're playing a passage that's not in 16th notes, um, you will have other combinations and other possibilities for slurring patterns. But I'm just giving you these ideas to sort of get your brain started to think about, okay, how could I slur these things differently? Same thing with rhythms. Um, so there's more possibilities than I'm listing here, but I do the ones I'm listing at, as a minimum. Okay, and then the last bit of sort of conventional advice about making thing fa things faster is to click up the passage with the metronome. So what that means is to start at a slow tempo, and I tell my students to start at a tempo that's so slow you can't possibly make a mistake. Often I think people start too fast. So if you are making mistakes at your slow tempo, even just little mistakes, it means it's too much for your brain to process at once. If you watched my um, videos about memorization, we talked about working memory. So if when you play at your slow tempo, you're making little mistakes here and there, what that means is you're overwhelming your working memory and it can't keep up. So you need to go slower. You need to go so slow you couldn't possibly make a mistake. So for me, I always start at least half tempo, but often slower than that. So usually between 40 and 60 um, is where I start, depending on where I'm going. So anyway, you start at this super slow tempo and then you click up by some regular amount, so by five, so like 60, 65, 70, or tens or something like that. My sort of rule of thumb for myself for how fast I click up is that the new tempo, so when I click up to the next tempo, it should feel slightly faster, but not like, whoa, this is like way faster than what I was just playing. So if it doesn't feel any faster whatsoever, you're probably clicking up by too little at once. It's not necessary to click up one at a time. So 60, 61, 62, that's gonna take you forever and not really produce much benefit. 
But if you click up by 10, say, and you play 60, and then you click to 70, and 70 feels like, whoa, this is fast now, that's too much at once. So go back and click up by fours or fives or something like that. You want to click up to above your goal tempo. So if your goal tempo is 120, say, you'd want to click up to at least 130. The point of this is that if the fastest you can play is your performance tempo, it's always going to feel really scary when you get on stage. So you want to click up to faster than you're going to have to do so that your performance tempo feels easy and comfortable for you. So when I'm clicking things up, often on the first day or the second or third day, I can't get all the way to my goal tempo and that's fine and that's completely normal. So I will keep track of how fast I got. So maybe today I could get up to 95. And so I'll write that down. And then when I practice it again tomorrow, I'm gonna try to get faster than 95 by at least a little bit. Again, always start at your start tempo, that super slow tempo. Um, and then on the second day, try to beat your, beat your old tempo by just a little bit, even if only 96. So you're trying to push the envelope a little bit each day. Okay, so this is pretty standard advice so far. Rhythms, bowings, articulations if you're not a string player, and clicking up with the metronome. Um, but I find that these three things are not really enough. They, they do a lot to get it from slow to fast, but if you only do these, you still can't just perform it fast. So now we're gonna get into the sort of more advanced ways of making things fast, and I find these to be the most helpful. Um, but again, I start with the ones that I've already discussed, and then I move on to these more advanced things. 